Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community, I'm Trigger and this is my beginner's building guide for Forza Horizon 5. Let's go! Alright, before we get into the video, I just want to mention I stream Forza Horizon 5 every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. This is when we go through and do our new festival playlist stuff. And I'm available for questions and anything else. So if you want to come by, say hello, ask questions, that is the time to do it. Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Alright, let's get into it. So this build guide is a very simple, easy to follow six step plan. I'll take you through every step. This is actually how I personally build my cars as well. Although this is not a tuning guide. Building and tuning are two separate things. They are linked together, but building the car comes first and then you tune the car. And tuning is a whole nother video. This is something that's extremely deep. There's a lot of very complicated topics in that. So I wanna go through tuning on another video. I don't want this video to take a super long time to do. Anyway, let's get into it. Step one is to have a plan. This sounds obvious, but you need to know which class you are building your car for. A great recommendation that I have found to be true came from Hoki Hoshi, and that is to keep your car within two classes of its stock class. For example, if your car is a C-Class in its stock form, do not build it to be higher than an A-Class car. The reason is this. There is a delicate balance between power, handling, and your class rating. As you increase the power of your car, you also need to increase its ability to handle that power, and increasing either of those will cause the class rating of the car to increase as well. And with most cars, the maximum amount of power that you can put in is actually much higher than the car's ability to handle it. So if you dump a bunch of power into a car without considering its potential handling ability, you will overbuild the engine for the chassis and your car will not be fixable in the tuning menu. The goal is to find the perfect balance between power and handling while staying within your target vehicle class. So for step one, you need to have a plan. You need to know what class you're building your car for. Here are the upgrades that affect the handling of the car. Aero and appearance, tires and rims, platform and handling. Here are the upgrades that affect the power, engine and drivetrain. And the drivetrain section can affect both in some ways, especially after tuning. But let's move into step number two. And for this, we're gonna be using an example. We're gonna build the Toyota 86 for road or street racing. Because it's a C-class car stock, I plan to build it into an A-class car. Step number two is to take a look at the available conversions. What you're looking for is to find out what the available engine swaps and drivetrain swaps will do to our class rating. Your goal here is to find an engine that adds the most power possible without adding a significant amount of weight or class rating. For this 86, I like either the 2.0 liter F4 Turbo or the 2.0 liter F4 Turbo Rally. I'm going with the Turbo Rally because it offers quite a bit more power and reduces the weight slightly. It also adds a turbo to the car and leaves us with around 140 class points, also known as performance index points or PI for short. Remember our max for this build is A class, which is 800. So we have about 140 points that we can play with for the rest of the build. This is about what we're gonna need to finish it off. So now let's take a look at the drivetrain swap. The only option is an all wheel drive swap and it affects the launch and acceleration tremendously. So in this case, I will be taking it even though it does spike the PI rating by nearly 30 points. Step number three is to choose what you want to prioritize more. Do you wanna prioritize handling or power? I recommend prioritizing handling at first, and then as you get more comfortable with building cars, you can start to try to find a more balanced build of power and handling. 
For this build, I'm going to favor handling heavily. The reason I recommend this is because it's the easiest way to make the car feel good while you're driving it, and it's easier to drive the car if it's not super wild with a bunch of power and not enough handling. Step four is to start upgrading the car. So because this is an A-class build and handling is the goal, aero and appearance should be your first stop. You'll want to unlock front and rear downforce by adding the Forza Horizon 5 race front bumper and rear wing. Notice it says in yellow that it unlocks downforce tuning. That's what you're looking for exactly. By doing this, you've actually managed to reduce your overall PI rating by 7. Next, you should move into platform and handling. Upgrade the brakes, the suspension, and the anti-roll bars by selecting the option that once again unlocks the tuning options for those things. Save chassis reinforcement and weight reduction for later. Next, move into the drivetrain and you guessed it, pick the options based on what will unlock the tuning options. So for the transmission, the race seven speed is the best option for this car. Generally, you wanna take the race option that affects acceleration, braking, and launch the least. The driveline affects the throttle response and it reduces the weight a little bit, so I almost always take the race option. And since we are building the car for racing, we will be taking the race differential to unlock your full differential tuning which is one of the most important tuning options in the game. This is a definite necessary item. Step five is to select your tires for your build. In most cases, the semi-slick tires are the best option. They will make a huge difference in braking, launch, and handling. Front tire width is something you can play around with, but I do find that the more narrow front tires tend to be better for handling, but it's good to upgrade it once from the stock option. For the rear tire width, wider in general is better for your grip. In this case, I will be going with the widest option, but pay attention to the stats and use your judgment on which one gives the best results without sacrificing too much of your PI rating. Stock rim size is generally better, but bigger rims look better, so take your pick. They don't really affect too much of the handling. It does add a little bit of weight when you put bigger rims on the car, but it's not terrible. It's not gonna really change things too much, so pick the ones you like the best. And lastly, the track width depends on the car. I would select the middle option for this car. Sometimes too wide and too narrow can be bad for handling. And finally, step six is to add power and reduce weight. Your car's handling potential is already near its peak with the options you've put on it, so you can use the remaining PI rating to add power and reduce weight. Start by grabbing the largest weight reduction and then start adding power until you reach exactly 800. This does take some back and forth. You may need to change your weight reduction option and pick several different engine upgrades to get it just right. But what you're looking for is exactly 800 for your PI rating. For this 86, I landed on a camshaft upgrade and the 232 pound weight reduction option. I also added the sport chassis reinforcement to help with the handling and braking. It's not 100% necessary, but it didn't affect the PI rating and it didn't really add too much weight. Now, if you're struggling to get this car exactly at 800, you can always change a few things. The clutch upgrade is usually pretty good for reducing or gaining one PI, as well as different rims. If you add rims that subtract or add weight, that will subtract or add PI rating. And with that, there you have it. This build has the most potential to handle super well for A-Class Racing. It of course will depend on your tuning, and that is definitely a whole other video like I said, but let's go ahead and compare this build with a stock tune to a published A800 tunes that we can find in the game. Now keep in mind the blue lines are our build with the stock tune and the yellow lines are the published tune. This first one looks better for pure speed but is worse in every other category. This next one is pretty good for speed and braking but again doesn't really handle that well or accelerate or launch well. This one is good at braking, but not as good for everything else. Good on speed for this one, but not that great at everything else. 
The only one that I feel can compete with our build is this one called Dodo. He built it for speed and acceleration instead of handling, whereas ours is designed for handling specifically. In a straight line, this tune will beat ours, but we all know races have turns, and ours is built to take those turns faster. So if I had to pick, I would definitely pick the handling over the speed. And remember, this is actually with the stock tune. If we go through and tune our car, it will be even better. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I will be covering the basics of tuning in another video, so stay tuned for that one. My tune for this 86 will be available for download via the share code in the description. Hopefully, this has taught you a couple of things about building cars in Forza Horizon 5. As always, my goal to help you get better at the game, and I think building and tuning cars is probably Probably one of the most complicated or most challenging parts of the game. So if you have any questions about this, like I said, you can DM me on Instagram, Twitter, or Discord, or you can jump into my stream every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time. I hope to see you guys there. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to all the militia subs. I will catch you on the next one. Trigger out.